You hate to see a player get injured, but man, this sure spice things up. I'm in my zone. Yeah. I'm in my zone. Uh, yeah. Breaking them as they come. As they come. Who crowned at number one? Welcome to In The Zone. I'm your host, Chris Broussard. Before we get started, please remember to subscribe to us on iTunes and SoundCloud. Give us five stars and tell us what you think. We've got a great show for you today. I sat down with former NBA All-Star Kenyon Martin a couple days ago, and my man did not hold back. We'll share a bit of my discussion with Kenyon today and then run our talk in its entirety on Friday. You won't want to miss it as Kenyon shared interesting and sometimes hilarious stories about former teammates Allen Iverson, Carmelo Anthony, Chauncey Billups, and Jason Kidd, as well as accounts of some of the most brutal NBA fights he ever witnessed or took part in. Remember, he was kind of a roughneck in the league. It's incredible stuff. But first, we are going to get into the biggest news in the association, and that, of course, is the knee injury to Kevin Durant. All things considered, the Warriors got some good news Wednesday when Durant was diagnosed with just a sprained MCL and a bone bruise. He'll be reevaluated in four weeks, and while he's out indefinitely, a return before the end of the regular season has not been ruled out. Along with Golden State, we're all breathing a sigh of relief because you never want to see a player get injured long term. That being said, there is now uncertainty in the air. After all, who knows when Durant will return or how well he'll play once he does get back. While it may sound cold hearted, KD's injury has actually injected some much needed drama, suspense, and intrigue into this NBA season. Suddenly, questions abound. Will the Warriors win the West? Before Durant's injury, practically everyone on earth believed Golden State would reach the finals. Heck, every GM in the league predicted that exact outcome in the preseason. But now, while I still favor the Warriors, especially since it sounds like Durant should be available for the playoffs, things have certainly gotten harder for them. With rust, lost chemistry, and the likelihood that Durant will be less than 100% upon his return, the chances of San Antonio, Houston, and yes, even the Warriors whipping boys, the Los Angeles Clippers, winning the West have increased substantially. Remember, without Durant, this is not the same Warriors team that won 73 games last season. Andrew Bogut is gone. In fact, he's in Cleveland. More on that later. Also gone, Mo Spates, Harrison Barnes, Leandro Barbosa. They've replaced him with young kids like Pat McCaw, sensitive kids like JaVale McGee, or old men like Matt Barnes. Who knows how those guys will respond on the big stage of the NBA playoffs. If KD is hampered, the Warriors' rim protection will suffer Big time. You don't think San Antonio will exploit that to the max? They've already got the size, the coaching, the experience to make life hard on the Warriors. Perhaps Durant's injury has cracked the window just enough for the never-to-be-counted-out Spurs to slide right through. Or how about the Rockets? They've already beaten Golden State once this season, and that was before they added six-man extraordinaire Lou Williams. All Lou has done is averaged 24 points since joining the Rockets a few weeks ago. While I wouldn't pick any team to win a shootout with the Warriors, if anyone could, it would be Houston, especially if a gimpy Durant is not quite himself. The Clippers... Well, look, it's true. The Warriors own them, having spanked them 10 straight times. But if the Spurs or the Rockets beat Golden State for them, I think the Clippers are fully capable of upsetting one of those two squads. Doc, you got to prove Big Baby wrong, man. Prove you're not overrated and that you can get the max out of these boys. Will Steph return to form? Let's face it, we all miss the old Steph. Heck, I think the new Steph misses the old Steph. 
This year's version certainly isn't bad, but because of Durant's presence, it's no longer bombs away like last season. Will that Steph reemerge now that KD is out for at least the next four weeks? Is the old Steph even still in there? We in a stank, bruh. Oh, Chris, you're sleeping on the old Steph. With one flip of the switch, he'll be back. Okay, but Steph's been trying to get that mojo back the past two months. Over that period, he shot more than any other Warriors player. He's no longer deferring to Durant. Durant only shot 14 and a half times a game in February. But the results for Steph have been mixed. In January, he was darn near as impressive as he was last season, averaging 28 points while draining 43% of his threes. But he's fallen off of late. Over his last 10 games, Steph is shooting an almost unfathomable 42% overall, including just 31% from behind the arc. Now is the time for Steph to turn back the clock. In fact, it may be necessary for him to do that for the Warriors to hold off the Spurs for home court advantage throughout the Western Conference playoffs. Besides, while Golden State is more talented and we presume better with KD, they're certainly more fun to watch when the old Steph is running wild. Come back, old Steph. We beg of you. Come back. Baby, come back. The Warriors are no longer the favorites for the finals. That's right. The Cleveland Cavaliers are looking like the favorites now. At the very least, a finals matchup between these two has to be a toss-up, a pick -em which is perfect for a third straight meeting, a rubber match finals. I mean, working Durant back this time could be tougher than working him in at the beginning of the season was. Of course, in the playoffs, there'll be little room for error, little time to work out the kinks. And what if the old Steph really does come back? Will it be difficult for him to dial it back to reincorporate Durant? And what about the Warriors' late game struggles in determining who's the go-to guy? They needed time with KD on the floor in tight games to figure that out. Now, they won't have it. Plus, Cleveland has improved. Say what you want about LeBron calling out for more help, but you know what? He got it. Dude should be executive of the year. With the additions of Bogut and Darren Williams, the Cavs could now fill two starting lineups. While Golden State's depth has suffered, Cleveland has become the deepest, most versatile team in the league. A week ago, there was legitimate fear that Golden State could actually win every series, including the finals, in four or five games. Now, we could definitely see a few seven-game thrillers and maybe even an offseason when the Warriors are once again forced to go back to the drawing board. Here's the two worst case scenarios for the Warriors. Either a rusty KD returns, the chemistry is jacked up, and they fail to win it all. Or KD doesn't return this season, and the Warriors are beaten in the playoffs. In the end, either situation could actually work out for Durant. If the Warriors, for whatever reason, lose this season, it could lead folks to have more respect for the future titles Durant does win in Golden State. Remember, that's what happened with LeBron in Miami. When he lost to Dallas in 2011, it proved that his path to a championship, even with a star-studded heat club, would not be easy. So when he finally won it the next year, he got love and widespread praise. The same thing could happen to Durant. If the Warriors roll through the playoffs and the finals, dismantling everybody in their path, some will think KD took the easy road to a ring. But if he loses first, if climbing a mountain, even in Golden State, proves to be difficult and challenging, he'll get more respect when he finally does lay hold of the Larry O'Brien trophy. And if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> All right, let's take a break so I can tell you about the Undisputed podcast. It's a daily podcast featuring my friends Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp debating the hottest topics in sports, hosted by the wonderful Joy Taylor. This is an unscripted and unfiltered version of the show each day with guests that range from NBA and NFL Hall of Famers to celebrities and rappers like Lil Wayne and 2 Chainz. Subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play Music, or your favorite podcast app. We got my man Kenyon Martin, man. It's an honor to have you here Thanks in the zone. Me, Thanks, uh, thanks for coming in. Um, 
you retired two years ago. Yeah. So what, what are you up to nowadays? This, um, <laughs> just trying to throw my hat in different things, man. Um, I want to get into coaching eventually. Really? But, um, so right first you'd like to do broadcasting? Yeah, broadcast a little bit, man, so I'm home more. Um, okay. I have a son that's in high school, 16. So I, I, I want to be there for him yeah. through this process. Um, but yeah, man, I just want to be home a little more, man, just be around the kids and, okay. and being able to uh, go to my son's game and be in the gym with him and teaching him some of the stuff that I, I've learned over the years. I'm saying okay. playing the game the right way and stuff like that. But So your son, what's his name? KJ, uh, K it's Kenyon, Kenyon Jr. Kenyon. Okay. Yeah, he don't. He, he tells nobody his name is Kenyon. Does he not want to be like people to know? You know what I mean? I think so to a certain son? degree, but if you look at him, look you look at him walk, his mannerisms, yeah. everything is me. <laughs> like everything is me. There's another father out there who's got great sons. Yes, uh, Levar Ball, and he's been talking a lot. What do you think? I mean, he said some things. One, that his son is better than Steph yeah. Curry, Lonzo Ball. As a parent in a similar position, yeah. what's, what's your thought on that? There's nothing wrong with having confidence in your kid. And he has multiple boys that's yeah, yeah, yeah. good yeah, at the good. game of basketball. Yeah. Potentially be great, we don't know. But right now they're good. They're kids, still. Yeah. Kids. Yeah. Key word in that phrase <laughs> is kids. Even Lonzo. Yeah, he's a, he's still, yeah. A, still a kid. Yeah. So let them be kids. Mm -hmm. That pressure uh, uh, alone just from they, them wanting to make it. Yeah. Without dad being there, putting that pressure in the media and all of that. Who's to say your son is going to, like, he's a yeah. talent now. But who's to say that it's going to translate into the NBA game? Everybody game from college, high school don't translate to college, and everybody mm -hmm. college game don't translate to the NBA. Mm -hmm. Who's to say that he's going to be successful? Yeah, He can get in there and be a, a bust. I, ho I hope not. I wish nothing but the best. I'm not going to speak ill of that man's child. Mm -hmm. I hope he plays well and is able to make it, but... There's only 450 jobs. Don't do that to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if it don't make it, then what? Yeah. Yeah. If they don't, right. if, if they not one and done, then what? So if they got to go to school for two years, they look at it as a failure. Mm -hmm. Do they be like, well, my dad said I was going to be one and done. Well, maybe I'm not good enough. That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? Some people, it took me four years. I went yeah. to college for four years. I was the number one pick. Might yeah. take that long. You never know. It's, <laughs> everybody is different. Everybody develops different. Everybody, maturity process is different in basketball. The sun is good now, but I hope I hope it works. But I feel they setting all of them up, for, not failure, but making it that much harder for yeah, them. Yeah, extra pressure you put. Definitely, in. definitely. There's another beef, right? There, that's not a beef, but Shaq and Javale McGee. W what's your thoughts on that? Shaq and Javale. Did you play with you? You played no, with Javale? No, okay, no, he wasn't. No, he wouldn't have made you. it on our team. <laughs> if he thinks Shaq is bothering him, he wouldn't have made it on our different team. He would not have made it, man. Why not? Go ahead. We would have teased him just as bad as Shaq in the locker room and stuff. Like, we was, we played basketball. We was having fun, man. Yeah. Like, myself, Melo, JR, then AI come, Chance. Like, we had fun. Like, nothing was exempt. Nothing was off nothing. topic, man. Yeah. Like, that's what it is. Grow a set, <laughs> get some thick skin, and go out and hoop, man. It, but it's, it's, it crossed it's, the line. I guess you can I say, say. Well, do you see you where say, Shaq coming from? Though? Yeah, yeah, you can say maybe. Like I often look at it both ways. Yeah, you can say Shaq beating the dead horse. You know what I'm saying. Okay. Javale, like, okay, we get it. We he, he is who he is. And you look at it at the other part. You you've given him material. You the ball go through the net. You on offense. You going to take the ball out. Like you giving him material. You know. Yeah, yeah. We all fall down. We all didn't shot air balls. We all didn't trip and fell down the court. We all didn't miss dunks. But. His antics and mishaps, it stands out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I asked Al Harrington yesterday, man, so Al's a nice guy. Man, Al, cool, man. That's yeah. my guy. I saw him, he was over my house last night. So me and Al having a debate about it, and Al's a nice guy. Okay. Al's <laughs> the nice, like Shaq took it too far. Okay. And he's bullying the kid now and all that. I'm like, yeah. bullying? <laughs> so I asked Al, so when's the last time, or the first time, that you took the ball out of bounds on offense? He told me never. I said, argument over. <laughs> you know, like, it's over now. Yeah, like, yeah. if you've never done that, how can you, you know what I'm saying? Like, so he should man up and just stop making those types of crazy mistakes. It's going, like, you're going to do stuff throughout your career that people are going to, it's going to be laughable. The way I've always handled stuff, the way I was taught, if you got a problem with that man, go see him. Like, yo, man, you going to keep it up? Yeah. Like, well, ain't nothing wrong. Like, he don't want to go see Shaq. But, well, you invited him. <laughs> you invited him on the internet. On Twitter. 
on my mama. <laughs> you know, yeah, you from yeah, yeah, on yeah. my mama. Yeah, you know yeah. what that means. Yeah. Listen, on my, so go see him if you got a problem with him. Ain't nobody got to know that y'all that you went and stepped to him. Yeah. Do it that way. Yeah. But now you get everybody involved. Now your mom involved, the internet bullying involved, the TNT involved, Adam Silver. Like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, you got a problem with that man, go see him. Now, I've heard, I've talked to people, and they've said, like, fighting isn't uncommon either. Like, in practice or yeah. things like that. Is there a lot of fighting? I don't know if a lot is the Not right a lot. word, but... You've seen yeah, many fights. I've seen fights, been a part of fights in practice, fights in the locker room after games, teammates. Now, are there, because I've always said, like, the easiest place to get in a fight or act tough is on the court, Definitely. in the game, because you know it ain't Definitely. going nowhere. Somebody go break it up. Yeah, when you, in practice or the locker room, do they actually become like a real fight? Yeah, I've seen, I, I saw <laughs> my rookie year, uh, rookie year, yeah. My rookie year, I saw Kendall Gill choke out Jim McIlvain in practice. Really? Yo. Kendall was tough. I know. He took all types of... Yeah, I don't know. He took karate <laughs> and all yeah, of that. He, he man. That, yeah, 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 he took yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. But he, yo, choked him out in practice one day. What happened? What was this? Jim, you know, Jim McIlvain was wild. Yeah, elbowed yeah, yeah. him one day in practice. Elbowed him a couple times and Kendall got fed up. Okay. Yo, grabbed him, put him to the ground, man, and choked like, I'll like, kill you in here. <laughs> I'll kill you. Other than myself, I uh, Nene grabbed Steve Blake by his throat one day in practice. Steve Blake' daddy was in practice watching practice in Denver. Wow! Grabbed his man by his throat and picked no. Nene got them big old hands, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Steve Blake picked that man up. Steve was punching him, and um, he was just holding yeah. him. <laughs> um, I mean, you knocked you did you knocked out Nene? I don't yeah, know, knock him out. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a one hit a quitter. <laughs> did I he actually him. fall? I hooked him. He grabbed his. He was leaking. Like okay. They sent okay. him to the optometry. They thought I broke his orbital bone. Wow. That yeah. was his rookie year. No, I that think, was right? my first year in Denver. Okay. I had played. I was in Jersey, and that summer I signed with Denver. My after my fourth year, I signed with Denver. You know, he was yeah. starting. Yeah. Yeah. He was starting at the time, and when I signed with Denver, we playing open gym. This is before the season. That's started. That's what I thought. Yeah. It was before the season started. We playing open gym. So the days I would play, he wouldn't play. He'd stay in the weight room. Really. And the days I wouldn't come to the gym or I wouldn't play, he would play. So you know me, you know, my thought process is like, you avoid me. Yeah, yeah. So I come to the gym late one day. Okay, and he's playing. He's playing. <laughs> so I'm like, right, let me guard him. I guard him the same thing. We going back and forth, we hooping. So then he just started taking it. Like, he ain't really playing basketball. It's kind of getting a little so chippy. Getting okay. Like, feels going on mine, but you just, now you ain't. I, I stopped playing a few times. Like, listen, Nana, you're not playing basketball. Man. Chill. I told everybody, listen. The coach in the gym, the GM, there's people watching us play. It was a Christian group. And it's all, <laughs> yo, they watching us open gym play. I stopped playing, man. Listen, you do it again, I'm going to punch you in you. Straight up. No if fans, I'm going to yeah. punch you in you. You do it again. We go down, what he do? Going, I'm trying to box him out. He running out with his forearm in my head. Mm. I stand him up, hit him in his chest. Boom. He threw his hands up. That was it. Man, I turned everything into him. My hips, everything. Hook. <clears throat> that was grabbed it. his eye. He was bleeding. His eyeball was flit, fluttering like it was moving. <laughs> Yo, he grabbed his eye, was bleeding, and walked off. Wow. Wow. Man, man, like, I ain't, that was it. You know, for me, for my size, I'm a small he's, four. Because he's a lot I'm a bigger small than four. you. Yeah, he's, he's 6, a lot 10, bigger than 6, 11, 270. Did, it, did that, any thought go through your mind? Like, I was this dude's over. huge. I was, listen, I wanted him to swing back, Chris. <laughs> I wanted him to swing back. I was going to embarrass him in there. Mm, mm. He know, like, he practiced that karate, jiu-jitsu, and yeah, all yeah. that. Oh, so he does. Yeah, he, he, do, all, do, okay. yeah, he do all that. Okay. Where I'm from, I'm from the hood, man. You know like, crazy. You yeah, know karate. You know, what I'm saying? You know like, crazy. You throw your hands up to me. I guess he thought we was gonna jazz. I thought he was gonna he was gonna <laughs> throw his hands up and I was gonna put my hand outside of his and we was gonna turn and it was gonna be calculated. I'm gonna tell you right coming, left coming, <laughs> kick coming. Like, no, nah, bro. Yeah. You throw your hands up with me, we finna get it. Wow. So I punched him and hey. That was it. And Kiki Vanderway was our GM at the time. I guess Nanny was doing that stuff to people before I got there. Throwing tiles in people's face, all oh, kind of yeah. Okay. Try. So Kiki like he barked up the wrong tree today. So he was happy that it yeah. Was... Kiki Vanderway was like he barked up the wrong. This is exact wow. verbatim, word for word. Wow. He barked up the wrong tree today. Mm. You ain't have any more problems. No, nah, like no, 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 man. After a while, like we got like I think my last year, the year before, 
he popped fly one day on the bench or something, and I told him, all right, I'll whoop you your remember? ass again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Is um, Melo, he's, you know, been in the news. Yeah. Knicks were trying to trade him. What's he like as a teammate? Is he misunderstood? Do people have the right impression? What do you think? Um, I pl- I've played with Melo like eight years of, of his career. Um, right in this prime. Yeah, and I think I know Melo pretty well. Um, I'm a pretty good judge of character and people. Yeah, Melo is misjudged to, in this aspect. Like, Melo cares. Mm-hmm. Melo wants to win. Melo thinks he's the best shot at winning. Um, it's yeah, hard to turn won. that off. Yeah. And you win. Yeah. Until you win and win that championship as a freshman. You know, it's kind of hard to turn that off. You come into the league, your rookie year, team been in the basement. Yeah. You make the playoffs your rookie year. People forget that, yeah. Bron didn't he make the playoffs their rookie right. year. He turned around. You know? Yeah. Yep. So Melo made the playoffs every year he was in Denver. <laughs> so when everything is going through you, going through you, and it's hard to turn that off. Like, he wants to win, but his way of going about it is just different than the way LeBron goes about it or the way D-Wade goes about it. It's a time where you have to maybe take a back seat, tone some of it down, like, well, I do need this guy to do this or – this guy to score a little more, this guy. You mentioned George Carl. That yeah. was the, the coach in Denver. Um, I, we know he said stuff mm. about the fatherlessness and yeah, all that that's stuff. Yeah, that's... Um, I, you're a great father. You yeah. mentioned earlier five yeah. kids. Did that, is that part of why it rubbed you the wrong way too? Because he yeah. should know, he probably knows how you are with your yeah, kids. I mean. Yeah, like. That part of it, like for me to be a father, me to be there for my kids and know what it is to be without one, yeah. for one. And for two, I think I took it as he was taking shots at my mom. From the things we went through when I was a kid and for me to be here, at, <laughs> she did a great job. Yeah. Like I didn't need no father there growing up. I didn't need no dad there growing up. I turned out all right. Yeah. Nothing nobody could say about me going. I've developed thick skin over the years. It is what it is. But her, yeah. she's not in the position or the platform to defend herself. You know, so I'm, I was there and here to speak up for her and the job that she did and my sister helped her do mm-hmm. and get me here. Yeah. And, and I wasn't going to let George tarnish that. He, what was he like as a coach? Terrible. Really? And you know, he's regarded as one of the Wins best. don't. George's been blessed throughout his career with great talent. He stopped. So what were y'all thinking when he, he got a lot of accolades, as I said, throughout his career, but in Denver too. Like when you see us, the media, praising Crazy. him, what are you the players thinking at that point? We did our jobs as players. Like we did our jobs as players, man, despite having that handicap over there. Wow. No, I looked at George as a handicap. Like he So this isn't a, personal. You just, just a basketball, basketball. Basketball. Like if his book would have just been about basketball, like I don't I don't like the way Kenyon played. Or Melo, AI, or Jay Up. Cool. I don't like the way you coach. It's even. <laughs> but like I said, out of bounds thing. Don't have out of bounds plays. Y'all just never, that was a root. No. You don't have out of bounds plays. No, just one of them things, especially game on the line. We knew Melo was going to pop, going the ball, whatever. Underneath out of bounds, we just take other teams' plays. True facts. You know, I mean, you've been around the game. You know, you in practice, man, you work on time, score, situations. You up three, down four, time, three minutes to go, 30 seconds to go, how you play it out, what you gonna do, no timeouts. We never worked on that. Six and a half years of Georgia's in Denver. Wow. We never worked on it. We asked him to work on this, went to him like, yo, this is stuff we need to do. Out of bounds plays, time, score, situation. Oh, so just what play did, fast. what did y'all work on? Just what, play what? fast. <laughs> play fast, man. 30 layups, 30 free throws. You got a chance to win. Well, how about the defensive the philosophy. end? philosophy. How about the defensive now, end? Now, defense, he was known for some trapping and stuff. What, I, I put that in. I put that in. Me running at Kobe. Kobe out there torching us. So you just started. <laughs> Run at him. him yourself. Yes. Oh, I, okay, like, so. I, 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 I like that. We're going to start doing that. <laughs> sure job. Who, who was, who's the best team? And you played with some great ones. Yeah. Who's the best teammate you ever played with? Teammate? Um. Wow. J Kid, Melo, AI, Chauncey. I mean, you played with some great ones. If you just going off raw talent and get it done, AI. Okay. Like, just get go out and get it done. And just pure ability. Don't need to work on nothing. AI. What was he like in practice? 
because that's the whole AI thing. Practice. <laughs> he is my guy. Um, <laughs> Allen Iverson is my guy. So, let's start with training camp. That's considered practice. AI, he's the guy who would not do anything all summer. Oh, right, okay. And come to training camp and play himself in the shape. Did it in Denver, which I thought was impossible to do because <laughs> of the altitude, yeah, yeah. but he did it. It wasn't always um, in attendance. Okay. <laughs> but he, it wasn't, he wasn't absent, so to speak. So but, he would be there, but- No, no, like no. he would call in. He wasn't okay. in attendance, he would call in if he wasn't gonna make it. And, but the days he would practice, he'd go. Him and, like, he'd go. So how often- Hard to get him off the court. Once he's practicing. Yeah, once he's on there, it's hard to get him off. He want to go. He going to go, 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 go. How it's often was he not there? If you had to give me a- uh, Seven days a week, he was maybe two days a week. He missing two? Probably. Wow. Now, how'd y'all his teammates? What y'all- I didn't, he didn't care, man. It's AI. Because you know he getting, okay. He gonna come AI you, just- He, he going to come out and give you 30. <laughs> Y'all must have, y'all must have rolled, you talked about joking earlier. Yeah. I know y'all must have rolled AI about the practice stuff. Oh yeah, man. All Actually, the time. Yeah, it was that, man. Just jokes, man. Just here and there. Like, you know we gotta practice when we get in. <laughs> just joking, man. Just here and there. But yeah, it was, it's funny, man. Just to hear, like, cause you talk to him about it and you know the real story. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we know everything that led up to that. You have conversations, so everything that led up to that particular yeah. press conference. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. Yeah, it's it, it's it's part of history, real man. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 that's it's one never of the gonna, best. It's never gonna go anywhere. It's like Jim Moore's <laughs> playoff rant. Yep, yep, you know what I'm yep, saying? Yep, yep, yep. Um, Dennis Green. Yep. It's, it's like it's one of Crown those. Them. Yeah, yep. it's one of those that, that's is. gonna always stand out amongst press conferences and. Not a game. Not, not a game. game. Not a game. Like, and that was just like just hearing it over and over and over. I was like, yo, this is the best yeah. ever. All right, Kenya, man. I appreciate yeah, we, great stories, appreciate brother. It, man. And, a lot uh, more, man. Let's do this again, yeah, man. We like, will, yeah, for we sure. gotta pick this back up, man. For we sure, do it man. again, man. I'm, it was cool, man. I enjoyed yeah. this. Good. Let's do it. Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right, man. Love. Thanks, brother. All right. For real. All right, time to wrap it up and run it back. Before Durant's injury, practically everyone on earth believed Golden State would reach the finals. Remember, without Durant, this is not the same Warriors team that won 73 games last season. Will that Steph reemerge now that KD is out for at least the next four weeks? Perhaps Durant's injury has cracked the window just enough. That's right, the Cleveland Cavaliers are looking like the favorites now. At the very least, a finals matchup between these two has to be a toss-up, which is perfect for a third straight meeting, a rubber match finals. Game blouses. That's it for this week's show. Please remember to subscribe to us on iTunes and SoundCloud. Give us five stars and leave a nice comment. Make sure you also catch me live on my nationally syndicated radio show along with my co-host Brian No on Fox Sports Radio every Saturday, 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern. We'll be reacting to live games and covering all of the major stories in sports. See you next week. Peace. I'm in my zone.